In this video we're going to make a simple chat bubble in Unity. This is great if you want to show some messages on top of your characters or as a simple messaging system in a multiplayer game. For example, I use chat bubbles on Battle Royale Tycoon to display guest thoughts. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so what we're going to create here is a very simple but very effective system. We're going to show some text using some icon and display it above a character. Like I said, I use this extensively in my last game, Battle Royale Tycoon, in order to display guest thoughts. It's a very simple system designed to provide the player with a bit more information without having to go through a specific UI. So if you have a game with lots of units roaming around, like some management or strategy game, then this system is an excellent way of adding some extra information in an easy way. Okay, so here is what we're trying to make. I have some characters roaming around randomly, and they randomly say some things which you can see popping up above their heads. So we have an icon and a message. And as you can see, the message gets written over time. So this is made using the text writer that we made in a previous video. I'm also controlling my basic player character here. And I can press a button and there's a very nice text input window, which again, also made in another video. And in here I can say anything. So I just write something, press OK, and yep, there you go, there's my nice message. So you can see how this system is useful for showcasing any type of text, like dialogue between characters, or you can also use this in a multiplayer game for a basic chat display. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it! Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. I have my player character that I can move around and there's a bunch of NPCs just randomly roaming around. All right, so let's begin making our chat bubble. So first of all, the approach we're going to take is to make our chat bubble live in the world as a child of each NPC or player instead of doing it in the UI. By doing it this way, we essentially avoid some conversion. So first, let's begin by making a new empty game object. Call this the chat bubble. And now inside, let's make a 2D sprite. This will be the background. Then duplicate and make one for the icon. And then finally, let's right click, create a 3D object of text mesh pro text. So this will be our text. Now here in my textures, I have a simple chat bubble texture. Yep, just like that. And then for the icon, I also have a whole bunch of random icons. And for the sorting order, over here I'm going to place them on the top layer. So all of the main sprites, like the character and the NPCs, live on the default layer. Then the background, obviously, on the background. So this one won't be on top, so it will show up on top of everything else. Set the background on top, then the icon on top, and increase the order by a bit. And same thing for the text. Also go here to add to our sorting layer on top, and once again put it on 10. Then for the text, let's align it on the left side, put it down the middle. For the width and height, put both at zero, and down here, let's disable our wrapping. All right, so this is pretty much our setup. We have a background, a icon, and the text. Now, through code, we're going to dynamically select the icon, set the text, and modify the background to fit whatever text we write. So let's make that script, a new C Sharp script, call this our chat bubble, and let's drag it onto our game object. Okay, now in here, let's first make a simple private void awake and let's grab all of our references. All right, so here we have all of our references. When working with text mesh pro, don't forget to add the using statement. Now let's make a function to set our text. Let's call this our setup. So we're going to set up our chat bubble and inside we just access the text mesh pro to set the text and we pass in this text. All right, now just for testing, let's call it on our start. 
we call our setup and pass in a random string. Okay, that should do it. Let's test. And yep, there it is. We have our chat bubble indeed saying our text. All right, so far so good. Now let's make our background actually match the text. So here we're setting the text and now we need the background to match the size. Now we can get the visible render bounds by accessing the text mesh pro object and call get rendered values. So this returns a vector two with our size. And now here we might get some issues in certain scenarios related to the text not rendering instantly. So in order to avoid that from ever happening, we can access our object to call our force mesh update. So just adding this to make sure that it always works. So here we have our render bounds. Now we just need to modify the size of the background and add a little extra padding. So for the size of the background, we access the sprite render and we're going to modify the size. And let's say the text size was a offset. All right, so just like this, it should work. However, in order to make the size field actually be used, we need to set our sprite render to use the sliced mode. So back in the editor here, when we have our sprite render, instead of draw mode being simple, we modify this, set it to sliced. So as you can see, now we also need to modify our chat bubble. So let's select the texture. In here, select the mesh from tight going into full rect and hit apply. Now, since we're looking at this, we can also look at another issue which is now if we go back and we modify our width, yep, there you go, it actually does work. However, look at the corners when we increase it very further. Yep, there it is right there, it's not really looking very good. So again, we can just go into the texture, click on the sprite editor, and in here we can simply drag our edges. So this way the corners will not be stretched, so if we hit apply, and yep, there you go, now that looks much better. All right, so everything is set up, let's test. And yep, there it is, it does indeed have the exact perfect size. If we stop and we place the background right down the middle of the word, and yep, there you go, it looks exactly perfect. All right, so the size is working correctly. We just need to position it a bit differently and also add a bit more extra padding so that it does occupy also for the icon. Now, with regards to positioning, that is also going to depend on what you said here on the sprite import settings. Here we have the pivot, and right now it's at the center. So one approach you could take is for example, change this from the center and put it on the left side. And now with the pivot on the left side, we could simply move this to where we want and then just play around with that. However, this sprite might also be used elsewhere in our game. So if we modify the pivot, we could possibly cause some unintentional breaking changes. So instead, let's leave it at the center and do some math to figure out where we want our background to be. So back in the code here, we have our padding and we are modifying the size. And now, first of all, we need to add some extra padding in order to make sure that we also occupy the icon. So here, let's just try this out. And let's also try out a bigger message. Okay, there it is with a bigger text message. And now if we shift this to the right side, just like that, we can see, yep, the size is pretty much correct. All right, now we just need the position. So we just take our spread printer, access the transform to modify the local position. And let's just put it at half the size. So we're using at half of our size width. Let's see. And yep, there it is correctly right down the middle of the text. Now we just need to shift it a bit to the left to occupy the icon. And yep, there it is. So the text, background, and icon all match perfectly depending on what text is written. Awesome. All right, now let's customize our icon. First, let's make a enum for all of our possible icon types. So we have all of our types and now down here on our setup function, we receive the text. Then let's also receive our icon type. So now here we have to modify our sprite render dot sprite. So let's make a function to get the icon. Okay, we just do switch and now we need to return the sprite. So up here, let's add some fields for it. All right, we have them and we just return them down here.
All right, so that's it, very simple. And then on our setup, let's pass in, and right now let's say angry. All right, so finally in the editor, now here we have our fields and we just need to drag them. All right, let's test. And yep, there's the chat bubble with our angry icon looking great. Awesome. So functionally, everything is pretty much working. Now let's just make our class more robust and very easy to use. Now we're going to do that by making the class itself be responsible for instantiating all of the chat bubbles. I'm going to use a simple pattern that I've used many times, so if you've seen my videos, then this should be very familiar. Now here on our chat bubble, let's simply make a public static void call it create. We receive a transform for the parent, then a vector3 for the local position, an icon type, and finally a string for our text. Now here we just call instantiate, and we instantiate our chat bubble prefab. So that means that we're going to need our prefab reference. So in my scene, I have this game object with this game asset script. Now this class was fully created in a previous video. It's extremely useful to grab asset references from elsewhere in our code. So all we really need to do is add a public field, in this case for a transform, let's call it for our prefab chat bubble. So just a public field and we have a static instance. Now back in the editor, we can see our field in here for our chat bubble. So first let's make the chat bubble into a prefab, just drag it onto the folder, yep. And now here we drag our prefab reference right in there, okay. So with that, we can now go here on our chat bubble to access the game assets, access the instance, and grab the chat bubble prefab. So we instantiate our chat bubble as a child of this parent, then we set the allo composition, and then lastly, we get the component of type chat bubble. And we call our setup function and pass in the icon type and the text. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now we have this function, which is a static function that we can call from anywhere in our code and it will automatically spawn a chat bubble. So let's try it. Now here in my scene, I have a main game object. It has this simple script. Here it is, all it has is a reference to our player and all of the various NPCs. So we can use this just for testing. So let's make our private void start. And on start, let's spawn a chat bubble on top of the player. So we access our chat bubble, access the static create function, pass in the player transform. Now a certain local position, let's put it up and to the right. Now for a icon type, let's select neutral. And now for some text. All right, that's pretty much it. We just have this one function call and everything is handled automatically. Let's try. And yep, there it is, the chat bubble on top of the player. And since it is a child of the player transform, as I move the player, yep, there you go, it also moves the text. All right, awesome. So right now, the chat bubble actually lives forever, so this one will never go away. So let's make it vanish after some time. Now, in order to do that, it's actually extremely simple. We can use the destroy function, this one takes an object and then we have an optional time parameter. So we can tell it to destroy the chat bubble transform game object. And then after some time, so let's say after four seconds, destroy the chat bubble. We could also expose it as a parameter up here, but just in this simple case, this should work. Let's test. And yep, there's our message. And after four seconds, we wait. And yep, there you go. The message gets destroyed. All right, awesome. Okay, so now let's polish this up and add a simple animation. So let's open up our chat bubble prefab and in here, let's add a animation clip. Then we create a new animation. All right, so here it is a very basic animation, just a fade in. It automatically plays when the object is instantiated. So everything should be working. Okay, here we are. And yep, there it is a nice and simple fade in. So it fades in, shows the message and gets destroyed. Now for some more polish, let's add the text writer that we made in a previous video. So here is the class that we made and we made it very easy to use. All we need to do is just call one function. So back in our chat bubble on the setup, we first set the text, we forced it to update in order to get the text size. And then afterwards, just for the visual, let's use our text writer.
Okay, here we are, and yep, there it is. A nice animation and a nice text writer. So once again, a great example of the power of writing clean code. We made the text writer a long time ago, and since we made it in a way that's very easy to use, all it took was just one line of code and our chat bubble is now looking more polished. Now let's just randomly add some messages to all of the NPCs. Now in this script, I have a simple array of all of the NPC transforms and then a function to get a random message. So let's just add our random messages. All right, so here it is. I'm using the function periodic from the CodeMonkey utilities, which is always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So this will simply trigger this action every certain amount of time. So we simply grab a random NPC transform from the array. We grab a random message, then a random icon, and we simply call our nice function. All right, let's see. And yep, here we are with all of our NPCs saying random messages and all of the chat bubbles are working correctly. They're animated, they've got the text writer and everything looks pretty great. All right, awesome. Now let's go for one last thing. So just for fun, over here I have the nice input window, which again was fully made in a previous video. So yet another example of clean code. So we can write something and click on submit. Let's use this to let the player talk. Let's make a script to handle just that. So a new script, call it our player talk. Now here, let's do our private void update. And we're going to listen to the input, get key down on the key code enter. So when we press enter, let's say that we want the input window to show up. Okay, so we have our input window with our nice static function. Again, go watch the other video to see how all of this was created from scratch. But essentially we have an action which returns our input text. So it's in here that we can spawn our chat bubble. All right, that's it, let's test. Okay, so here we are, all of our NPCs saying their random messages and I press enter. And there you go, there's the nice input window. So let's say something and press OK, and there you go, there's our nice chat message. So we can input whatever text we want. We input whatever text we want, press OK, and there you go, just like that, we have a custom chat box. So you can see how this simple chat bubble could be used as a very basic messaging system in a multiplayer game. So here it is, all of our chat bubbles at work. And we wrote our code very nicely, so all you need to do to add this to your game is just call the create function and everything is working perfectly. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.